Hi, I'm Jim W6LG and welcome to my radio room and Ham Radio Basics and today's discussion is going to be the basic microphone which is a cool thing. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money and can do a lot of neat things um, and one of those is help us communicate and that's why we're here. We're, uh, we're communicators. We send messages, receive messages. We're not broadcasters and that's an important thing to remember. We're, we are communicators so we want to communicate and in many cases we're doing it pretty efficiently um, as ham radio operators we've learned how to send messages across the street and around the world ham radio where the hell did that come from ham radio ham why ham well the answer goes back to the 1880s and Beginning telegraphers, juvenile telegraphers, were often called ham telegraphers. And you can find reference to them in magazines that were written at the time uh, for uh, press telegraphers. And in fact, in one of them, there's a, uh, uh, a guy who writes in to a letter to the editor, <clears throat> and he describes himself as a juvenile ham telegrapher. So, uh, beginning telegraphers in 1880, 1890, along in that time, were known as ham telegraphers. And I think the genesis of that is probably being ham-handed or ham-fisted, not skilled uh, telegraphers. A um, couple of them complain about how much they're being paid. Uh, they're often referred to with um, with the adjective juvenile, juvenile ham telegrapher. So it's kind of interesting that the... Um, early telegraphers and in particular press telegraphers were often called hams or ham telegraphers and specifically ham telegraphers not just hams and that appears to carry forward uh, the earliest newspaper article I can find is 1921 and a ham radio operator in a neighborhood is interfering with somebody it becomes uh, a celebrity case it goes to Herbert Hoover uh, and it makes newspapers across the country the operator is described as a juvenile ham operator and that's where I get the connection with juvenile ham telegrapher so this article appears across the country it gets picked up there's not much mention between 1921 and 1923 of ham radio operators but then about 1923 it becomes uh, in a cup it appears in a couple of newspaper articles and I think that's I'm almost positive that's the first appearance in QST magazine prior to 1923 you'll not find ham radio operator uh, that phrase in QST amateur radio operator you betcha uh, ham radio operator not so much so it the first I can find is 1923 and it carries forward from there so it's a little bit negative and um, what can I say? We're, we're kind of stuck with it, but uh, and, it, and it doesn't quite have the same meaning. It probably means, in most people's ideas, less skilled. And let me tell you, there are some ham radio operators that are way skilled that uh, do really neat things. So we're going to talk about uh, mic gain, ALC, um, compression, bandwidth, what you need, how, much frequency, how many frequencies do you need, and the answer is not much. Um, and different kinds of microphones. There's going to be a couple of jump cuts um, uh, because this is going to be recorded in different segments uh, because of camera and microphone issues that keep cropping up and getting in the way. Um, and then at the end I'm going to um, uh, do a demonstration of different microphones. In any case, this will be sort of a choppy video and for that I apologize, um, but that's kind of the way it is. Anyway, uh, you'll probably see in other pictures the uh, K3s are on, they're currently off, so that'll give you a clue that this was recorded much later than the other parts of the video, but whatever. I'm a ham-fisted video guy. Anyway, trying to learn how to do this and not doing all that well at it. Um, so anyway, oh, uh, about about the, uh, the call sign. One of the really neat things about ham radio is you meet guys, you can meet guys from all over the world, and uh, one guy that I've met in 
just take the world of, and he's just a great guy, uh, is in Qatar or Qatar. Uh, I've asked him how to pronounce it, and I've heard both, both ways. Uh, he sent that to me as a gift. Just out of the blue, I get a box, and my call sign's in it, and I thought, this is really cool. So uh, I've prominently displayed it and uh, just love the thing. So um, his, uh, his call sign is A71AM. His name is Safe. Uh, has a beautiful station uh, out in the countryside and uh, big towers, just marvelous antenna systems. Anyway, back to microphones. We'll do another jump cut and see what happens. So bear with me. This will be a real choppy, rocky road. See you later. There's lots of different kinds of microphones. Um, I'm not going to recommend one over the other or tell you you have to go out and buy a new mic. And in fact, uh, some used microphones that are 25 to 50 bucks are great, and you can have just a lot of uh, a lot of fun with them. Um, for example, this is one of the best mics out there, and it sells on eBay for 25 to 50 dollars. It's a Shure 444, advertised the 1960s as an SSB microphone with a tailored frequency response that ranged from about um, 300 cycles. It said cycles in the uh, in the advertisement to about 3,000 cycles, so from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz, uh, and then it it drops off, and it has emphasis at about two. Great microphone. You've probably seen it in movies uh, in a gray version. Um, a friend of mine has one of these. He's worked over 300 countries with uh, exactly this microphone. Uh, so it's a great communication microphone, and as ham radio operators. We're here to communicate. We're not broadcasters as much as we are communicators. So it's uh, it, we're trying to get a message across and receive a message. This is a good mic. The mic that I use every day is this one. Uh, it's an Astatic 10DA, which was also brought out in the 1960s as an SSB microphone. It also has a tailored frequency response, a dynamic mic, um, just flat grade audio, uh, and I. I had one of these in the 1960s. It was the first mic I bought, and it was very expensive. And then um, that was unfortunately broken, and I bought a couple of them on four of them. Okay, I went crazy. Four of them on eBay as replacements, and I've used one, this one, for all that time. There's three on the shelf that probably need to be sold. You can find this used for anywhere uh, with a stand from 40 to $100. It's a great buy. Good microphone. It's got high output. Uh, it's a high impedance mic, so you'll need to make a little change to it. That's pretty easy to do uh, to get it to be low impedance. Another microphone that doesn't require any changing at all, and it's just a flat, great micro, great microphone, is this Heil uh, HM10. I bought this from Bob at Dayton uh, several years ago. It has two cartridges in it. One is a um, uh, HC4, and the other is an HC5. And um, I'm checking my microphone to make sure it's still recording because I've started this video like three times and it's died every time. Um, this is I'm running out of battery. This has uh, two cartridges in it, the HC4 and the HC5, and you can pick them by flipping a switch on the front. Um, the thing you have to know about this microphone is you talk into it this way because the cartridges are on top. Uh, and one has a slightly larger hole than the other, and I think the one with the larger hole probably has a lower frequency response. Just a great mic. And used on eBay, they sell for about um, about 100 bucks, 75 to 100 And uh, you want to make sure you get the right cord. There are three different cord sets. Um, Yesu, Kenwood, Icom. Yesu is yellow, Kenwood is red, Icom is blue. And that's with the, uh, the 8 pin mic connector. Uh, Elecraft is the Kenwood wiring pattern. So if you can get that um, love this mic. It's uh, there's also a gold line version and some others of this uh, this variant. Um, another microphone you see a lot is the old Aesthetic D104. <clears throat> Not necessarily a great mic. It's a high impedance mic. It's a crystal microphone, um, but it has uh, real punchy audio because it is a crystal mic. It tends to be pretty high pitched, which is good for pilots. And uh, there's some guys who still use these things every day. Uh, even though it's high impedance, they've connected it to their low impedance transceiver uh, and just adjusted the mic gain accordingly. And some audio guys will tell you that 
impedance doesn't matter much. Um, you adjust the levels. If you're an engineer, I know, I know, I know. But it can be made to work. Got a great microphone. Another mic I have, the Treasure Lock, not very good for SSB, uh, is a 1921 Magnavox microphone. Um, and this is um, an ST4A. This belonged to Phil Keast, 6DD, and then W6DD. And early on, he was uh, just PK, sent his initials. This is called a loudspeaking transmitter for telemegaphone radio horn systems. Okay, anyway. Um, probably a, uh, a carbon element. It may have had a lot of voltage across it. Some of them did. It's a metal case, so uh, use with caution. Had a twisted pair uh, mic cable to help eliminate hum. In um, 1921, there's an article in QST about uh, going on voice. And in the article, uh, and it happens to be the first article in this magazine, they talk about frequency response. And they mention that you need to have from 2,000 cycles per second, sorry, from 200 cycles per second to 2,000 cycles per second. So um, even then, they knew that the frequency range that you should use for voice was in kind of in that range. And I really believe that you need, you don't need stuff below 300 hertz. That's just garbage, noise, doesn't add to communication. You need from 300 to, at the very top, 3 kilohertz. So 2.7 kilohertz of, of bandwidth is all you need. And um, we're here to communicate as ham radio operators, not to broadcast. So um, those are the microphones I'm going to uh, demonstrate. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transmit uh, with one K3, receive with the other. The one that's receiving will be recording, um, be recorded by a computer, and then we'll play that back. And I'll do some different uh, different settings, um, different levels of compression. What's the right level? The answer is probably two, three, four decibels of, of compression. Uh, the mic e needs to be set so the ALC uh, meter indicates no more than about half scale. Beyond that, you're pushing your luck. Um, you can listen to uh, yourself with the monitor on, wear headphones, see what it sounds like, uh, and I really encourage people to do that. So we're going to have a mic gain, ALC compression, monitoring, and we're going to talk about human compression real quick, and that is overemphasize just a bit. Put a little bit of emphasis in uh, what you're saying when you're working somebody on the other side of the planet. So as we're <coughs> carrying a conversation here, it's just conversational speech. But if you're talking to somebody in Russia and he's got a lot of noise, emphasize and go ahead and do that. Don't yell. Please don't yell. Uh, don't go nuts. Just give it a little bit of emphasis, a uh, little bit of compression. Have the mic gain set so the ALC on the, on the uh, meter is indicating about half scale. Uh, you don't need... Behringer boxes and all kinds of expander, companders, clippers, compressors, all that other stuff. Just have great audio by plugging your microphone directly into the transceiver. If your transceiver has equalizers in it, boost the lows just a little bit, a couple of dB. Boost the highs a lot. And uh, put the emphasis in about 2,000 hertz. And you'll get through pileups and people will hear you and understand what you're saying better than if you have sort of muddled audio especially the guys who have emphasis on the bass. I mean, it's not good communication. It's often hard to understand what they're saying, and um, it's, it just is a waste of energy. So put it where it belongs at about 2,000 hertz. Anyway, back in a flash, W6LG. See you in a few minutes. Be right back.